Welcome to Sagas, a channel where we science the shit out of your favorite anime, games, and all sorts of other stuff. I'm your host, Eeker, and today we are proud to bring you another Dragon Ball Legends video. After just one day, our tier list has now become radically obsolete as the game has made a shift in an entirely new direction with the introduction of some great new units. So let's go ahead and take some time, discuss exactly where this leaves us, and update our current list. But first, here comes the drop. Hit it. Our previous tier list was met with mixed reviews, and for good reason. We aren't above criticism, and we realize that some of it was actually quite valid. The most valid of all was that while our choices may have been solid to most people, we didn't defend our positions well and go into enough detail. As a new YouTuber, I'm still trying to work out and find my voice on here and figure out exactly who I want to be. For those of you who've seen my previous content, you know that I'm not afraid of detail at all. In fact, that's my natural disposition, is to give a lot of detail. But I also got some criticism that sometimes that can be a little dry. So I tried to spice things up and make things a little more simple in the last video. Don't think it landed, and I don't think it's me. So regardless, I just have to be who I am and, and hope you guys enjoy it. So in this video, I'm going to try to find a balance between detail and simplicity, knowledge and entertainment, and hopefully kind of create my identity here. As with our last list, we are now including EX units alongside the Sparkings because, well, their stats and abilities can often make them must-haves when building competitive teams, so we feel it's important that everyone know where they fall relative to other Sparking options. Let's go ahead and quickly review the criteria for judging, which is the same as last time, but for those who didn't see the video, here it is. 1. We want to win neutral matchups. 2. We want to look at team synergy with an emphasis on the current meta. And 3. The general toolkit. This attempts to capture the intangibles like unique abilities, main abilities, all damage buffs, etc. Um, again, your favorite character may not be where you want him or her to be on this list and that may trigger you, but if you're truly interested in understanding my position and I didn't explain it well enough here due to t obvious time constraints, then go ahead and comment below and I'm pretty good at engaging respectful supporters so I'll happily discuss that with you. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the list. As previously stated, Z tier is a place for units who not only do lots of damage, are hard to kill, and have all around great stats, but they have to be units who introduce or use game changing mechanics. And while it may disappoint many people to know this, we don't have any new spiky haired additions to this tier, and we'll go ahead and explain why when we get to him next. Which brings us to S plus tier. This is where we put our premier beat sticks in the game. Just like the units you see on your screen, these guys pack a wallop. This includes everyone's darling Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, who makes his first ever entry at S+. And while it wasn't easy to put him here, and we all agree he was awesome against Cell in the anime, let's try to remove the cool factor of his character and focus on what he brings to this game. Gohan's all damage crisis buffs stack, and boy do they stack. He is likely the best beat stick out of the three when viewing him as a standalone unit, and his color is damn nice for the current meta. Gohan though, he suffers from one tiny problem and one really big problem. These issues are what kept us from barely keeping him off of the Z tier list. First, we've got Gohan's tiny problem, his lack of support. We call this a tiny problem because while hybrid still lack depth, and we feel like there was a great opportunity in this patch to fix that with say units like Super Saiyan 1 Gohan, um, EX of course, and a new long haired uh, EX Trunks, we also realized that you can still buff him quite nicely with purples, that's why we call this a small problem. The bigger issue with Gohan is actually this. Our criteria for Z-List states that he just doesn't introduce a game changing mechanic. His buffs are awfully powerful, but can we say that he can be plugged in on almost any team the way Bardock or Instant Transmission Goku and 17 can be? Not so much, and that's why he finds his home here. As far as S tier characters go, they haven't changed, and relatively speaking, Super Trunks is actually more powerful because he has more support and a partner in crime with Gohan. We really like these units here, but wanted to pause and discuss the controversy around Krillin last time, as well as Super Saiyan Vegeta being here. Krillin's biggest problem is his color. The powerhouse greens and Bardock really make running a blue impossible right now. However, if we forget about that for a second, for a healer support, he's one of the only must have blues in the game. and. Likely the most versatile healer since he can also dish out some great blast damage. As for Vegeta, we're even more in love with him. We here at Sagas believe cost reduction and key regen are some of the greatest damage buffs in the game. We could make a video on why that is. It's far and above better than any other damage besides 
all damage buffs. So what about Vegeta then? Well, his main ability when activated adds more damage in the form of extended combos than any other main in the game and can easily take out most any neutral character you put in front of him while it's up. This is why we love him so much and why we put him in S tier. On to A tier units. They're still plagued by a variety of problems, but we generally think that in the right teams these units can really impact the game. It's important to note that we have both freezes here because of the Zarbon and Dodoria buffs. Without them they are solid B tier and not viable centerpieces for a team. Red Goku was moved back up because while his stats are absolutely atrocious, he has worse stats than most of the extremes on this list. His Z ability and art card mix as well as his tag make him a top tier supporter of the Saiyans and we believe that makes him relatively more powerful. We also placed the new blue Goku here on A tier because we felt like his gimmick was too hard to set up and that his main ability against Broly is too little too late. But otherwise his stats are great and I've seen some people hitting for over 500k with one blue. So be careful because this guy may not only be a one punch man, but he's going to set up some pretty sick rising rush attempts at the world record. Looking forward to seeing you guys try that out. As with last time, we also have our first EX units here. 7 star EX Goku is here because with his all damage main ability buff, 7 star stats and Z ability, he, he's one of the most versatile and powerful blues in the game still and should be rostered above Broly and the new blue Goku on Saiyan rainbow teams due to his Z ability and all damage buffs. Bardock is an absolute beast. He has a broken blue card, amazing utility and great toolkit. This guy is a must have. As far as EX-17 goes, his cover ability and stats make him a force to be reckoned with and is very much deserving of moving up to the A spot. Now we move on to B tier. We dropped Vegeta here because, well, we felt like the presence of Purple Gohan eliminated his last spot in the meta on Purple teams. His stats just aren't great anymore. Father Time just has not been kind to him. And we felt like, unlike Red Super Saiyan Goku, this Vegeta doesn't bring enough to the team to justify anything more than B tier. It's at this point in the video that most people watching should be triggered. Broly? Pan? B tier? Gasps and clutches pearls. Oh my god, my, my sensibilities are offended. Yeah, they are, and sorry but not sorry because you think Broly should be A tier and Pan F tier. But here's why I disagree. Broly was already worse than EX Goku before. If you understand how damage works, you'd know while Broly's stat sheet has the highest strike in the game, his actual output on screen is mediocre. The reason why? All damage buffs, he has none. EX Goku does and on his main and unique abilities and as a result dishes out way more damage while they're up. Broly has a really bad green card, it has no additional damages from it, and it's so expensive. The presence of blue Goku also means that the new sparking Goku that is, means that he's no longer worth rostering on Saiyan teams at all. We're going to revisit him later on when movie teams are viable I guess, but for now he just isn't deserving of anything more than B. As for Pan, she was moved up along, seven, along with 7 star EX18 for the same reasons. They both were always really good cards, their issues were just lack of viability on the current meta. Hybrids and female warriors both got a lot more viable, and as such we can confidently say they deserve to be run on those teams and can now shine. Another point of controversy last time was EX18's place. We said that her place on androids was not secure because Green Bardock was just such a better person to bring since neither one of them has Z abilities that support the team, but Bardock was just so much more powerful. We also felt that Cell replaced Sparking18 and now both of those units have a new home which is with Pervy Warriors. Wait, wait, what? Pervy? Hold, hold on. Did you say Pervy? Am I reading this right? Sorry, the script says Pervy Warriors and I'm sure that's wrong. Oh, Master Roshi. Welcome Master Friggin' Roshi, everybody, because he is a solid B tier unit. When on Female Warriors, this guy is absolutely amazing. He's also totes adorbs with his turtle shell jet pack, so yeah, enjoy the animation there. But this guy is absolutely worth rostering and th this Pervy Warriors, Warriors team looks fun as heck, so go ahead and try it out. Finally, we have C tier. Last time we forgot to add Blue Spirit Bomb Goku and Cooler. We fixed that, but there's really nothing interesting to discuss here other than Nappa, who, as we said last time, was he has great stats and amazing all damage buffs, despite being one of the oldest EX characters in the game. He is truly the poster boy for this list, and the idea that EXs in their current state are just as good as Sparkings in a lot of cases. And honestly, 
He proves even more than that. He proves that they should have never been ignored. Overall, the biggest reasons this list has shifted though, so dramatically, was because this banner has shifted the meta and added more variety than last patch saw. Last patch, we only played units like androids and saiyans and several variants of theirs, but now we expect to see hybrids and female warriors make a run at it as well. Though we aren't sold that they're better than the saiyans and android teams yet, we'll save that for another video, but still, they're a lot more competitive especially hybrid sands. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did then go ahead and Jacksonville smash that subscribe button and give the video a colossal thumbs up. Don't forget to update your notification settings to be notified of all of our videos as soon as they come out. And last but not least, make sure you take care of yourselves and until the next time, have a great day.